Greg Palace has some grim news about the possibility of Trump's new immigration czar. Check that out. Ring the bell, leave your comments, and please subscribe. On the line with us is Greg Palast, uh, the uh, journalist, investigative journalist, author, filmmaker, his most recent The Best Democracy Money Can Buy, uh, both the book and the video, which you can find over on, um, I believe, Amazon. And uh, Greg, welcome back to the program. Glad to be with you, Tom. Of course, his website, Greg Palast, and you can tweet him at Greg underscore Palast, just like I'm Tom underscore Hartman. Uh, Greg, uh, give me an update on Chris Kobach's interstate cross-check program. I'm seeing uh, or I'm hearing rumors that it's on the edge of collapse. In fact, I, I think I retweeted your comment to that effect this morning. Yes, and and, so and how Chris might be reinventing good himself. Good news. That's a, that's a hint of what's to come. Interstate cross-check is the basically racist purge program created by white supremacist, and I use that word advisedly, Chris Kobach, uh, the guy who lost the governorship of Kansas as he was Secretary of State. Uh, when I was with Rolling Stone, we calculated 1.1 million voters were wrongly removed from the voter rolls, uh, mostly voters of color, accused of, a million people accused of illegally registering to vote in two states. And by the way, they didn't convict anyone of such a crime, but they did fix a couple of elections, including Mr. Trump's. So, uh, but it is on the run um, after a lawsuit filed by myself and Reverend Jesse Jackson, Illinois, pulled out. Um, uh, Kentucky has pulled out. Colorado pulled out. Altogether, 10 states. And Arizona even, thank God, now with the change in parties. Arizona has pulled out of cross-check. That's 10 out of 30 that still leaves 20, but here's the big one. The state of Kansas, which generates these evil purge lists, these evil racial black lists to remove voters, the state of Kansas has stopped issuing the lists because Kobach has left office, and his Republican successor is very uncomfortable about using the list, and now they're facing a lawsuit to completely shut down the program by the ACLU. So there is no new cross-check list going out whatsoever. The program's in free fall, literally, this threatened another million voters, and um, and that changes uh, that changes things markedly for the 2020 election. This is really seriously good news, and and I want to thank you, Tom, because it, it's been six years that I've been hunting Kobach and the cross check program, and you're the one place that has continually followed this investigation. We turned on the lights, the cockroaches ran for the wall. So congratulations. Yeah, well, thank you, Greg. I mean, you, you've, you've, uh, and I want to congratulate you on, on just, you know, yeoman's job. Uh, you're, the, you've, you've so stuck to this and, and done such a great job. So Chris Kobach uh, failed in his attempt to become the, the uh, what, lieutenant governor or the governor? Governor. Or governor of, of Kansas. And he, and he has, uh, you know, failed. His cross-check uh, program is failing. Now, there's still millions of Americans who have been thrown off the voting rolls who probably don't realize it and who will show up in 2020 to vote, most of them people of color, and, and who will show up in 2020 to vote and be given provisional ballots, which similarly won't be counted. So people need to, you know, double-check their voter registration because I know you've been voting at the same place for 20 years. I don't care. Kobach's got your name. Exactly. And it's out there, and they're still purging people based on those evil... Right. So, so double-check your voter registration. But that, that said... Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Kobach, I understand, he you know he came to the White House and he worked for Trump, uh, chairing his his voter integrity commission, and then it turned out that they couldn't find anybody who had illegally voted, and so they kind of disbanded it and quietly went away. Um, but I understand he's trying to reinvent himself again. Yes, as I warned then, he was trying to get himself into the control of the Department of Homeland Security, but no Republican, let alone Democrat, was going to confirm him to run Homeland Security. So Trump, his buddy, has done something even more dangerous. Here's the bad news. Trump has put his name out there, a trial balloon through the AP, that Chris Kobach will be named immigration czar. That is, he becomes the boss of not only Homeland Security, but he would so-called coordinate all the departments. That's Defense Department on the border. That's uh, the census, which is very important. That's, um, you know, uh, health and human services. That's the State Department. So, you, you, in other words, he's making the vote thief in chief. Now, the now, immigration czar. There's, there's another kind of prefacing piece to yeah. this that, that we probably should have both shared with our viewers and listeners before 
before laying out that that uh, uh, you know jaw dropping bit. Yeah. And that is that it, and when uh, Arizona passed this uh, you know vile racist uh, legislation, the Papers Please law. What was it called? Bill Ten something. Uh, yeah, uh, SB Ten Seventy, the 1070. Driving While Brown law, the ACLU called it. That's correct. That that was actually written by Chris Kobach, wasn't it? Yes, he, Kobach himself told me, you know, Kobach called me a few times uh, trying to talk me out of doing my reports. Uh, Kobach was very proud to say he wrote SB 1070, which was found unconstitutional by the federal courts, and even our Supreme Court, believe it or not, found it unconstitutional. Uh, he also came up with the, uh, with the prove you're an American citizen law in Kansas, you have to prove you're an American citizen in order to vote, which, by the way, a lot of people may say, sure, you should be a citizen to vote, but guess what? We're not Red China. We don't have citizenship papers uh, that we carry around or chips in our brain yet. And so in Kansas, 36,000 people, mostly students, i.e. Democrats, and, um, and uh, some officers at uh, the uh, Air Force base, base in Lawrence, um, so Air Force officers, their military ID is not a proof of citizenship. They lost their right to vote. That was found unconstitutional as well. And by the way, not one of the 36,000 people who lost their vote, not one, Kobach admits, was an alien voter. Not one. Wow. But again, this is dangerous. And guess what? He was the guy behind the census, the Commerce Department Census Division, adding the question about, do, are you an, uh, an alien in your household, and do you have aliens in your household, adding that question to the census, which is why this new position is super dangerous if he gets yeah. it. Yeah, so, so here we've got a guy who was the author of uh, legislation that was so racist, um, the, the show your papers, please, the driving while brown law in Arizona that, that uh, even the Supreme Court, even the right-wingers on the Supreme Court couldn't go along with it. Um, who organized and engineered over a period of a decade a multi-state effort to suppress the vote of Latinos, Asians, and, and blacks, um, uh, African Americans. Um, and Donald Trump wants to make him, this guy who has a history of basically, I mean, he doesn't have a history of like promoting NASA or a history. I mean, I can't think of anything else that Chris Kobach has ever done in his career other than this. And in fact, um, from a piece I was reading, you know, we, we just, I'm just finishing up this week a, a book of uh, it's The Hidden History of the War on Voting, which will be out uh, next year. And uh, I was reading a background piece on Kobach. And he made uh, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in consulting fees with small towns, basically helping them pass bizarre racist laws that then got struck down. And many of these towns, actually, a couple of them actually went bankrupt because they couldn't afford right. his legal fees. He, he, he got rich doing this, you know, hustling yes, and, this and, stuff. And I would let me add on that, by the way, Tom, that our investigation uh, of where the money came from for these towns, they still went bankrupt, but $100,000 went to the little town of Farmer's Branch, we traced it back to the Koch brothers. So, you know, he's Wichita, he's Kansas, and that's the base of the Koch brothers, as you know. Yeah. So he's a Koch creature, plus he's also the guy who, um, he was, while he was Secretary of State, he was uh, also a counsel for an organization called FAIR, whose founder says its purpose, its purpose is to maintain a European-American majority in in the US a European majority so what does that mean Wow so so what could be the actual I mean beyond just you know broadly speaking oh my god but what would be the actual consequence of putting of, of Trump putting Kobach in the position of, of quote immigration czar what does that mean what kind of power would he have what might he do that that a, a less racist and more rational person, even a, a, a less racist and more rational Republican, probably wouldn't do. He's put his dangerous cards on the table. Kobach has said we should use the answers on the census to look for these, what he says are one million illegal aliens voting in our election. But it's illegal one to use million. information from the census for law enforcement. No, it isn't. It's traditional, and, it's, and the census has been kept separate simply for, uh, to encourage people to answer the forms. He wants to ensure that people won't answer the forms, to terrorize people. 
by saying, oh, I have an alien in my household or I'm an alien, which, by the way, is not against the law either. Uh, but um, so he has said we should use the census material. So wait a minute. I mean, the census is in over. the Constitution, right? The, the, the Constitution says every 10 years, you know, the, the, a survey shall be conducted, to you know, for the purposes of apportionment to, to determine how many how many representatives a state gets and, uh, you know, basically how many votes they have in the House of Representatives based on their population. Yeah. Um, and, and you're right. It doesn't say in the Constitution you can't use the census, you know, can't turn that information over to police agencies. But you're saying this was just tradition? There's never been legislation passed saying that the census no, has to be... there's very little restriction. And also, don't forget that, uh, that if Kobach calls this a national security matter, remember, it's homeland security is also involved, that this is a matter of protecting our borders. We have an emergency, according to our president, who can issue an executive order to dip into those census figures. And Kobach has been upfront about doing that. He's also been upfront on, uh, for example, pushing a national... Uh, proof of citizenship law that would require you to prove you're a citizen in order to vote. Um, so that's one of the things that, that we could look for. We have no well. problem right now. There, there literally is no non-citizen voting in America. There might be a lot of non-citizens who are working in America, but none of them are voting. Well, that's right, because you get, by the way, the, the, they, uh, um, the Republicans accused 181,000 citizens of Florida of being quote, potential illegal aliens, and started removing them from the voter rolls by the thousands, sent out thousands of notices that you lose your vote unless you take off a day of work and appear in court and prove you're a citizen. And this went out, obviously, to Hispanic voters overwhelmingly. Out of 181,000 people terrorized into either giving up their vote or fearing registration or being stopped from registration or being purged, they found one single alien voter, a Republican-registered Austrian. 